I'm going to resume where we left off this morning in reading some of our emails and some of our uh, various responses that we get on the uh, TV and on the internet. We get all kinds of people writing to us. And these are some of the folks. We read some this morning. These are YouTube comments and regular emails. And I got an uh, email from Patty Knight in Oklahoma City. And Patty's been with us some time. She writes all the time. Hi, Grace and Truth. You're sending along a thank you for the message of truth and DVDs. Jim, I am constantly reminding myself that all I'm supposed to do is tell the truth, and that's it. It's not my job to convince others of anything. That's true. If the Holy Spirit can't convince them, what makes you think you can? Uh, that has been very helpful when it comes to talking about what we believe to others. You know, that's really important. Predestination is really important when you're witnessing because you realize we don't do something the free will people do. They try to get you to accept Christ. Would you like to accept Christ right now and become a Christian? We don't do that. God will either call somebody to believe or he won't. Uh, just those words are usually enough to stop any kind of argument. I have found out that I am autistic and am beginning to understand myself, sort of. It's been an interesting journey. Autism is not at all what I perceived it to be. The public has grossly misrepresented autism on purpose as usual. Thank you for explaining Kilius so well. The wording in Scripture is still a little confusing, but I've gotten the concept. It would be impossible to look at the world around us and not see the concept of Satan being loosed for a little season, because I believe he's loosed now. During the last years, be well. In Agape, Patty Knight in Oklahoma City. We love you, Patty. Just keep watching. And then Neil Hunter writes, uh, Hello, sorry for so many questions, but I'm truly interested in learning what Jim's thoughts on the Apocrypha. The book, the Bible talks of Enoch's prophecy. I assume the prophecy mentioned in the book of Enoch. Why would it be removed if not because of corruption. First of all, the book of Enoch was just like the book of the Assumption of Moses and the book of Judith. These were books written by people, but they're called the pseudopigrapha. Pseudo means false. Graphe means writings. They're false, not in the sense that somebody didn't write them, but because they're not a part of accepted canon of Scripture by the early church fathers and they've got some error in them. You can read them just like you can read uh, one of these commentaries right here. They may have something in history about it, but you cannot accept John Calvin's commentaries as Scripture. Uh, they, he may be in agreement with Scripture, and any time I study uh, men who are written commentaries, I don't necessarily agree with everything. I weigh what they say against the backdrop of Scripture. And uh, the Bible mentions Enoch, that Satan did not, Michael did not contend with Satan about the body of Moses. That's in the book of Enoch as well as in the Scripture. Just because they quote something that's in the Scripture, uh, it, it doesn't make it not true. It is true. So, Anyway, when Second Samuel 24 says God moved David to number Israel in First Chronicles 21 and 1 says Satan provokes David to number Israel, how do we understand the conflict? It's very simple. The word Satan, Satanas, in Scripture, this is the word in the Hebrew. Satanas. And Satanas merely means adversary. The Bible says that when David asked King Achish, the 
king of Gath, if he could go with him and bring his army to attack Saul, the Philistine soldiers said, no, he can't come with us. He is our Satan, our adversary. So there's nothing. Satan just means adversary. That's all it means. Anywhere you find it. So that's the whole thing about that. Anyway, I have overwhelming conviction that the little horn on the goat in Daniel is the is the Israel of the Maccabean revolt. No, no, the little horn is Alexander the Great. It even spells it out for you and shows you that. What are the thoughts on in simple terms on the two little horns? One comes from a goat and out of what I believe is the solution horn. No. If you read it real close, you've got Babylon, Persia, Greece, and Rome. And always with Rome, you're anything that's equated with iron. Iron was the strongest metal they had back then. They had not developed smelting uh, steel of iron with carbon, which would give you steel. They hadn't learned that yet. So Rome was always identified with iron. That's the beast with iron teeth. And you see the scorpions with breastplates of iron. And among the arachnid world, and they are arachnids, eight-legged creatures, uh, the breastplate of the scorpion tells you what family it's with. So when it says they had breastplates of iron, over there in Revelation, it's talking about Rome. And uh, and the two horns, Persia was represented as a bear in the seventh chapter of, of Daniel. And Persia was rep represented as a two horned goat in the eighth chapter, seven and eight. And the reason it was represented as a two horn, that one horn was longer than the other was because, because the, the Persia was a Mede, was a Persian Mede empire. Some of the uh, some of the uh, kings were Medes, and some of them were Persians. Uh, Cyrus was a, was a Persian king. Darius was a Mede king, but they did this peaceably. I don't know how they got along, but they did. So the two-horned goat, and one horn is longer than the other, the Persian Empire was stronger than the Medes. That's what it's talking about. And, of course, Greece was represented as the leopard, and there's reasons for all this. Where do you get all that information? Out of history books, biblical history books. And then Babylon was represented as a lion because it was the most regal of all the empires. And the lion was the most regal of the beast. What are your thoughts on the simple term? It's the two little horns. One comes from the goat, Greece, out of what I believe it. No, you got these things very confused. So what is the other little horn that comes out of combined beast? I just told you. Of all those at the end of the ten horns, you're very confused. If you call me and talk to me, I'll help you. If the ten horns are Israel, if the ten horns are Israel, ten horns are northern Israel, or the ten northern tribes, Israel was told that they could beat all their enemies and what gave Israel up to Babylon, Persia, Greece, and Rome was they quit serving God and they lost their power to overthrow the enemy. And But the ten horns are not destroyed at the end of time. They joined Christ in destroying the beast. I don't know why nobody's ever mentioned that of all these prophecy teachers that the horns don't die. Wouldn't the little horn there be modern Talmudic rabbinical Israel? No, no, no. You're really confused. 
you need to get my messages on this. I believe Samaria as well as Jerusalem, uprooting Judah, Levi making themselves priesthood. They didn't make themselves priesthood. God made them the priesthood. Ignoring Christ as high priest, they didn't know ignore Christ. God set up Levi, the third son of Jacob. You're very confused. You need to listen to my DVDs. And Dan, military might, if I am way off, I would appreciate a nod in the right direction. Thank you so much. Sorry this was so long. Neil, you've got a good desire. You've got to back up and throw a lot of that away that you've assumed and look at, r listen to my prophecy tapes on Daniel, the 70 weeks, and you'll hear these things. Mr. Brown, this is Daniel Wilk in Goodlesville. I finally met you in person, heard a message on a Wednesday night. I was so happy, and I'm always with you even when I'm not. I'm witnessing to neighbors, friends, work, colleagues, and family out of town via the internet looking forward to the chili cookout. Hope to see you very soon. A special thanks again for all of my DVDs that keep coming in the mail. I so look forward to that. I'm proud to call you my teacher. Sincerely, Dan Wilk in Goodlesville. He's the cook over here at, at Old Charlie's. He was the cook at the Colorado Grill and they had some really good food up there in the White House. And then he's, and then uh, Chris Jackson from Reno, Nevada writes, Jim, the word catcher guides from my workout seems like the command to struggle with. Well, it is. Trying to work it out. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. It's the same word that Paul used when he said, how to perform, perform that which is good I don't find in me. But he commands the Philippians to work it out. And then he says, it's God that works in you to will and do of his good pleasure. Uh, it's starting to make sense. We can't work it out, but the struggle is a must. That's right. Agape and flail. Chris Jackson and Reno on the body. We love you, Chris. Keep watching, brother. I'm not putting anybody down. I get so many people that write to me that are very confused. Write to me, call me or something, and we'll talk about it. And then I got a few more of these uh, uh, YouTube comments. Got one from Dr. Decker uh, why, on why I hate Pentecostalism and charismatic doctrine. It's a worldwide lie. For those who still do not get it, Peter was not a Christian until Jesus showed up. Well, okay. <laughs> Christ-like. Uh, which means that he did not exist what until jesus chose him at his time period i don't know what that means didn't exist you mean spiritually he was walking around the earth fishing that's one thing he was doing so for those who ask the question where was pentecostalism in the first 1800 years think about what you have been told by jesus and when he first showed and spoke to Peter, Jesus certainly did not reject Peter, the Pentecostal. Peter wasn't a Pentecostal. He was celebrating Pentecost. Pentecostalism is just, you have to know what dialects and glossa are. Those are lies from the devil. No, you're confused. Remember what Jesus said about hating your brother, that was an opposition to loving your brother. If you don't love your brother and give him the commandments of God, then you hate him. If you don't tell him the truth, then you're hating him. Oh, you can be nice to him and say, hi, how you doing? How you, how you getting along today? And you can hate him when you're doing that. This is terrible. Pentecostalism is one, Pentecostalism is one of the largest growing faiths within Christianity. That's what's wrong with it. Few will find the narrow gate, not one of the... The reason it's growing is because it's all a lie. The tongues are a lie. Faith in is a lie. Slain in the Spirit is a lie. Everything they teach is a lie. It's the wrong Jesus. God says He will give the increase. <laughs> Many are going into the Broadway. Few will find the narrow way. 
They have the largest church in Christianity in South Korea. That's not a church. That's a circus over there with 800,000 members in one church. That's that crazy Pentecostal in Korea. Y'all familiar with him? Jesus picked out Peter, the Pentecostal. He wasn't a Pentecostal. He preached at Pentecost. Why he loved him. After the resurrection, Peter was blessed by Jesus in his boat with an overabundance of fish. It was then Peter submitted and began to understand for the first time Jesus' real love for him. You need to watch my DVDs. You would have, you, you're ignorant. You don't know anything, Dr. Decker. You don't sound like a doctor to me. I don't want you treating me when I'm sick. Uh, Debbie Ann writes, God bless you all. Keep teaching, Jim. We love your teaching. Our lives have changed so much through what we have learned. Sending much love to you all. Eli Pratt out in, in California commented on Easter and get saved is not the resurrection. The resurrection is daily. Uh, so Christ once suffered to bear the sins of many and to them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin and salvation. What is the day of Jesus Christ? Day of the Lord was a term that the Jews used. Day is the word Yom. Yom Kippur means the day of atonement. Yom is the word day. So the day of Christ is when he comes to visit someone either spiritually or literally and he'll visit you with judgment or with grace. Omega Cube writes, commented on Easter and get saved is not the resurrection. Resurrection is daily. Can you make a copy of this and send it to Rick Warren, Saddleback Church? You can't get anything to Rick Warren. Rick Warren is an idiot. He's not going to listen to it if you give it to him. Uh, he was on CNN and said he had no idea how the Easter Bunny got hooked up with Jesus. Well, I'll tell you how. The bunny was a picture of, since they reproduced fast, it was a picture of fertility and the fertility gods of the ancient world. He knows the truth. No, he doesn't. Rick Warren doesn't know any truth. He chanted Easter. Easter is front of a packed angel stadium on solar Passover while I was praying for him to stop. <laughs> they hate Yeshua. They want another Dionysus, Tammuz, Osiris. Thank you for showing me I was 100% right. There's nothing as bad in the Protestant movement as the Pentecostals and Charismatics. They're lying, and those of you that are following, you need to get out of it. You're following the wrong Jesus if you're in it. Rich Sanchez commented on the apostasy dispensationalism. This guy's a liar. Okay, thank you very much. If you want more of our DVDs, just let me know, okay? Velma Jinks commented on who are the two witnesses who are the 444,000. They are. The Song of Solomon is connected to one of the two witnesses when it, when you read it in prophetic spiritual context as Messiah intended and in the end times it is what one of the two witnesses will experience. The two witnesses is the church. You evidently didn't pay any attention to that. The prophecy involves the meanings of the names within the story. Zill and Dan writes to us on the love of many will wax cold. Let it not bother you that American preachers lying to the American public. God ordained everything. That's right, and he ordained us to be angry at that. God commands us to be angry at the winds of doctrine in Ephesians 4.26. Who ordained that majority will be lied by those preachers as well. We are commanded to be angry at them. That's an imperative mood, be angry, or Genzomai. His flock will not believe them, but only those who are not God's people will believe in lies. Those big liars are the God's tools to blind and deceive smaller liars. They are smaller liars because they declare that they believe, but in works they deny that. He hath blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts, 
that they might not see with their eyes and understand with their heart and turn and I should heal them. That's quoted by Isaiah, the 10th chapter concerning Israel. And for this cause, I will send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Then uh, Mangboy Hoykip commented on sons of God marrying daughters of men. It has nothing to do with Seth and Cain. They are all human beings. So what? You're ignorant too. Long. You need to get in line with these other guys that don't know what they're talking about. Grant Posco writes on the beast. Babylon will attack the church. The end of time. Doubt makes you search for truth. I find I'm always not 100% certain in looking up the meaning of nearly every word to make sure if I quote it, I know what I'm talking about and have a depth in myself so that the ground beneath my is firm. I don't know what you're talking about. You're real positive. And then John Wayne Raleigh writes on the beast will attack the church, spiritual Israel. Thank you, Jim, for another great teaching. Isn't that funny? One person will say, you don't know what you're talking about. Another person will say, what you're talking about is good. And then my two cents commented on sons of God marrying the daughters of man. Explain. What an incredibly ignorant hick. <laughs> talking about me. I thought a hick was somebody from the sticks that didn't know nothing. Uh, teaching as if he knew anything. He is, boy, I sure have wasted my time for 62 years studying, haven't I? And I don't mean I study a little. I mean, there's a time I've studied for decades, 30, 35, 40 hours a week, and I studied intently. He has passed anyone correcting him. Those who listen to him are destined to fall into the same pit he can't call out of. I thought I'd set like he, I figured he must be saying it. Okay, thank you, my two cents. And that's about what it's worth, about two cents worth. Huh? Yeah, I think he's funny. Steve LaPointe writes, correspondence. I find the more I tell folks, God does not love everyone, and they say, I believe he does. I then explain in Romans that God loved Jacob and hated Esau. Before either one of them was born, before they had done any good or evil, one he loved, the other he hated. I have also explained to others that there is no such thing as a sinner's prayer except in Christ. It's not in the Bible. If God saves us, it's his work alone. That's right. Just on these two alone, most want nothing to do with me. Even standing in truth, it has affected my work as a painter. Oh, okay. Even telling folks that Jesus has nothing to do with Christmas, that is pagan. <coughs> and then go on to ask them, did you know it was against the law in America to celebrate Christmas 200 years ago? And that usually leaves them quiet and some walk away and say, I believe it in my way. I just let them know you can do what you want. Just remember it's not truth. I also explain Easter, Mardi Gras, Halloween, and Valentine's Day are all pagan, and they come from an ancient world. I have the best teacher in you, Jim, and I'm grateful for all your teachings. Hope all is well. Agape to you and Mary and Grace and Truth family there and abroad. Steve LaPointe. Thank you, Steve. Appreciate those encouraging words. i got one more. Uh, Clinton Balthazar, dear brother up in Iowa, Bettendorf, writes on so is an adverb in John 3.16, whosoever is not in the original text. Yet another sledgehammer of a message, Pastor Jim. God is doing everything because he wants to. Man has no chance or free will to choose until the last trumpet sounds. Agape and flail, called out of dirt sheep. <laughs> I, love, I love you, Clinton. He's a, he's a straightforward guy. All right. Remember our announcements. We're on TV.
in Nashville every night at 8.30. In fact, we'll be on there tonight in about 55 minutes, and then we'll be on for three hours straight on Sunday night. That's Channel 49, and uh, we're on the Internet 24 hours a day all over the world. We get response from a little bit of everywhere. And uh, I'm so thankful for this truth. I am at peace. I went for years in and out of Baptist churches looking for somebody I could talk to about truth. I got to a place I wouldn't mention anything. I just around a bunch of Baptists that believe in free will and I accept Christ as sinner's prayer and I didn't believe in any of that. And I had to start a little Bible group in my house in order for this to come about, in order to be on TV in 250 towns and cities. And we're going to keep on saying these things. All right. Uh, we'll... We support our needy people. We got a lot of needy folks. If you want to help the needy, make your check. The needy believers, not just needy people, believers. If you want to help the needy, make your check to Grace and Truth Ministries and put needy on the bottom of it. We'll, that'll all go to them. Uh, and then we help, we support Scott and Dee here. This is Mrs. Scott here. And Scott's at home taking care of the kids. They have to go to school tomorrow. And uh, if you uh, want to support them, they have their Spanish ministry here in this building every Tuesday night at 8.30, at 7 o'clock. I'll get in a minute. I'm thinking of the TV. Uh, at 7 o'clock every Tuesday night here. So if you speak Spanish and you want to learn some things in Spanish, then come and join them. And if you want to support them, make your check to Grace and Truth and put mission on the bottom of the check. We'll be having our, our chili cookout come October the 6th. That's just around the corner. It's just a few weeks away. Isn't it amazing how quick that comes? I see it's going to be here before you know it and I'm saying that uh, six and eight months ahead and here it is and uh, we'll be having our chili cookout down here at uh, Rockland Recreation Center about a mile and a half from the church on the lake so come out and join us okay all right well let's go to the Lord in prayer and Eric why don't you pray for us Thank you for everything you've given us. Uh, thank you for turning our heads around and our minds around and calling us to do what is righteous in your eyes. Crush us under your hand. Yeah.